That's a fish eating pad at the bottom. That scrape the fly along, scrape their their back legs along the water and pick up. They can detect a ripple and we'll pick up the fish. This is a female with her young. Squirrels, tamandua, small porcupine. In the marmosets, this is the pygmy marmoset. The, um, another, this is not the arboreal, this is not the flying one, but this is what you call the arboreal bag again, it's the slug. Half its body weight is just uh, digesting leaf material. Possums, and this is the pygmy marmoset. It's coming back. I haven't shown this for quite a few years. And the largest of our New World primates called the Smoky Woolly. And this guy has a Fu Manchu. He's in the wrong mustache in the wrong country, but this is the Emperor Tamarind. <laughs> so a researcher that had habituated these got me up very close. It was pretty amazing to see these. Um, the uh, em well, what did I call this guy? The pygmy marmoset has two lower incisor teeth that uh, drill holes, as does the saddleback tamarind. And they drill holes into the trees, and they're basically sap eaters. They'll lick the sap. And then the insects that come to the sap will also eat for protein sources. Hmm. The spider, the uh, owl monkey that comes out at night, it's a nocturnal monkey. And the squirrel, the TT spider, <laughs> I had a group of spiders that were, no, it was howlers. This is the howler monkeys. And when you, early morning, you hear a roar. It sounds like a roaring wind going through the canopy. And these guys are giving their territorial calls. But one group got rather upset at us and came right over, the group came right over us about 75 feet up. And all of them defecated on us. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a cost to... Uh, <laughs> primate watching. <laughs> and here's a white lip. There's a white lip and the, um, oh gosh, I forgot. The species. Okay. This is the Montezuma deer, small deer, Quati Mundi. And a tapir, or very hard to see, this was a habituated tapir that was wild, but yet habituated. I mean, it, was, it would come around the camp. Now that's a zoo shot, but I think the Tigre de Octorono, they call it, is one of the most amazing animals. Very powerful bite. And now people go to the Pantanal to actually see them. Uh, they feed on hymen, but of course taper is one of their favorite prey. It's one of wild pigs. So the last shots are just images and time of, of uh, being in the heat during the day. It would be, oh my gosh, probably close to 38, 39, 36 Celsius. And then by 2 o'clock, almost on clockwork, these 35,000 foot anvils would come over. And you'd hear a hiss as the hail would come across, as these anvils would cross and cool. To me, the clouds were extremely beautiful. That's what I love about Singapore, too. It's these huge rain clouds that form. This is Choke Karao over the Apuramac. It takes about eight, nine days to get here on foot.
Well, thank you. I got done in time. <laughs> I apologize, I was a little rusty on my natural history. I've been focusing on Asia. Any questions or? Yes? When you said um, some of those shots were made uh, in the, the, the animals were captured, were you in a wildlife sanctuary, a zoo? What, I mean, how, in what terms were they captured? Okay, they are in an open enclosure, and I, I got to meet um, Dr. Alvarez del Toro, who is. Um, doctor in Tuxla Gutierrez, Chiapas, Mexico, and he created